Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Property Roundtable. Myself, Rama and Jackie, with a combined experience of 50 years, adding value to your journey in buying a landed property in Singapore. In selling as well. Well, I do it for so many episodes. I still don't have a fixed uh, starting para. It's okay, bro. It's something different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, today we're going to do a um, relatively interesting topic. I would say that we have to define some parameters. So please don't get... Uh, angry and continue to watch through the video and see what uh, you think about it. Uh, the topic for today is, is it worth paying a high price per square foot for a landed home in a popular district? Hey. So in all fairness, <clears throat> we are going to part down the question first into what is considered popular district. Mm. Okay, obviously popularity uh, plays a different role in different uh, people's perspective. Yep. Some people feel that being near good schools uh, would be their top priority, making that the number one popularity factor in their purchase of a landed home. Mm. Not some, la, I think most. Okay, la, most. Yeah. But for dinkies <coughs> like me, me or me not. La. I mean, mm. yeah. You're the minority, bro. Uh, but still, uh, as a realtor, I would still try to choose near to the good school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, because that one, you know, mm. because you're still a Gen X. <clears throat> yes, Gen X. Yeah. X. Okay. Popular district uh, school. Two popular district uh, close to future transformation plans. Mm. Correct. What are future transformation plans, meaning that uh, very documented, well-documented areas that mm. will have future growth according to the government's master plan. Mm -hmm. So for example, um, let's say near to the Pai Leba Air Base uh, relocation, mm. let's say near to, uh, say, Turf City new mm. plan, it just <laughs> got announced. <laughs> let's say near yeah. to um, maybe Tanga. Let's say near to what else? I don't know, Long Island, you know, East Coast area. Uh, Pongol. Yeah. Mm. Things Mandai. like that. Yeah, Pongol, yeah. maybe uh, digital transformation near yeah. to the full, you know, the <laughs> industrial area. So that's where popularity stands. Also mm. future transformation plan. Mm -hmm. And maybe another perspective to uh, popularity could be near to public transportation nodes. Mm. Because yes. typically landed home houses more than a single generation, maybe mm. uh, younger ones and older ones as well. And being close to popular, uh, being close to public transportation nodes mm. uh, is also top of the uh, expectation. Mm. This is a summary of what we have heard so far from our buyers. So therefore, we categorize those three as a popularity factor, mm. which is why uh, in today's discussion, we may say, for example, uh, District uh, 19 mm -hmm. is popular because there are some uh, good schools and near to future transformation plans, mm -hmm. certain areas. Uh, yep. District 20 uh, mm. there's and 26, for example, which is your the Thompson, mm. your Landor, which obviously the Thompson transformation plan for the Thompson East Coast Line has already... Yep. For you, yeah, turn uh, mm. fruition, uh. Mm. Yes, and it's uh, again all the landed property there is now found a new found, you know. Yeah. Uh, pricing uh, interest. <laughs> yes. Pricing. Yes. Yeah. New all because of this new township. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, of course. And we mentioned before, uh, District Twenty Six, and of course, uh, we also would categorize, uh, let's say District Sixteen as another popular area because of the future transformation plans mm. around that area. Although schools are not there but mm. I think a lot of people uh, play a really long game to that so mm. they believe that that will give them some form of comfort in terms of buying in that area yeah but east is always the best level. yeah east side is always uh, the best obviously no. 16 16 the but garner a lot of uh, mm. spillover effect from 15 right? yeah, yes but mm. the west is becoming popular because the Jurong Lake district transformation plan has been uh, wowing a lot of okay I stop you there <laughs> uh, well, 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 so I don't want you to make West any more uh, more <laughs> than the East. <laughs> well, yeah. that being said, uh, a lot of white sites there. Uh, popularity is uh, increasing, but you know, like West Side fans will always be. You say White Side, then they understand. White Side is uh, areas where you know where the government uh, has given maybe the bidders uh, more flexibility in terms of how they plan for the mm. future. Uh, the landscape lah, the mm. urban landscaping there and perhaps there's a lot more things they I can think maybe play. we should do an episode on uh, URA's uh, transformation 
you yeah. know, master plan and what all these things mean <laughs> la, one day. Right? Yeah, we yeah. should. And the second part of the question would be, what is considered a high price? Mm. So, uh, Rama, what do you think is a high price? Uh, let's go in terms of per square foot. La. Okay, uh, let's not go by quantum. Yes. Uh, so today, <clears throat> I'm actually very proud to say this because I <laughs> always will bring this back. That one guy who commented, you must compare Apple to Apple. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I hope he's still watching our <laughs> videos. <laughs> so uh, 2000 is no longer expensive already. Yes. <laughs> okay, so today for this video sake, yeah. we're going to still, okay lah, 2002 as the starting okay, point of expensive. 10% lah. Yeah. 10% above uh, 2000. Okay. So as the starting of the yes. high lah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Later we'll share with you uh, how many of these transactions that happened in the first quarter mm -hmm. um, probably lie within this or even to date lah. Mm -hmm. How many trans transactions that lie within this yep. category. Mm. Um, Jackie, what do you think? What's a high price? Um, it, it very much depending on the condition of the house. Yeah. Obviously, single story versus two story or uh, three story structure. Mm. Or okay. rebuild. Yeah. yeah, it's everything is very very different. Um, yeah. The reason if if it's a single story, uh, in the popular district, what is considered high? I would say now I'm already seeing like district twenty, district nineteen. Yes. Single story yes. are asking for one thousand eight, one thousand nine psf. Correct. Mm. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um. In beginning of the year, you are still able to find thousand seven. Yes. But now across the broad, everybody is asking thousand eight, thousand nine. Mm. Obviously, that also depending on what's the offer and what's the transaction price. Yep. Yes. So we can see that it's inching towards the two thousand PSF mark for yeah. a single story. Mm. Yes. Okay. For a two story structure or more. Yes. Um, yeah, the asking can be is way above two thousand already. Yes. Mm. It's way above. The norm asking is about 2003, 2004 now yeah. for District 19. Mm. Obviously, it will differ from district to district. For yeah. more popular district like District yeah. 20 where all the famous schools are, yes. the one we can clearly see there's another level up. Yes. Yep. Yeah? Correct. District 10, Correct. even more popular evergreen district for yes. lender housing, the one also another level up. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, basically, if we were to like Mm, put an uh, analogy to it it's like there are building blocks like, it's like a Jenga tower so if you are on a base if you are a single story you start mm. with this base in a, in a so called less popular district and then if it's more popular you add a bit of premium to it mm -hmm. you add one more story or two stories to it uh, you add a bit of a premium to it if it's uh, I would say works done within the last 10 years another premium to it mm. and of course uh, if it's newer if it has a modern features like say lift you add a lot of premium to mm -hmm. it yeah. mm -hmm. and then so on and so forth correct so uh, but for discussion sake single story in popular district maybe around a thousand nine or maybe it would say two thousand lah. since mm. since thousand eight thousand nine is already asking right mm -hmm. so yeah. let's say two thousand yeah. is a high mm. uh, entry level and mm. then in even uh, better or more premium districts mm -hmm. we are looking mm -hmm. at maybe two thousand four mm -hmm. uh, on a let's say a two story old structure because is there are less Single story structures uh, in very popular districts that are smallish lah. I would say most of the terraces are usually about so. So, Harvey, can story. I can I yeah. stop you there for a while? Like, yeah. Okay, because now that you talking, you're, you're talking about the premiums. Yes. And you know, uh, in terms of how much more built up space they have. Yes. Uh, what are the features they have in the yes. house? And uh, these are all. And then we are relating the PSF to it lah. Yes. <clears throat> so I believe the PSF is on the land. Yes. Right. On the land. On the land. But we are talking about the PSF on the land, but Comparatively, we are comparing like um, higher build-up space. Yes, you, you understand what you understand. I'm asking you. You have a build-up right? component. Yes. Okay. Mm. Yes. Land being land, single story, mm. double story. You yes. have the land. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, maybe mm. in another level would be say like a single story. Let's say two thousand is a mm -hmm. is a high price. Maybe mm -hmm. a double story. Maybe two thousand two is a high price mm -hmm. for older uh, mid property and in more premium districts maybe mm. 2004 could mm. be a high price mm. I think this is, don't do you think that there's a better way of val evaluating or evaluating a house yes than to just take the built up space and put a PSF to it um because in in a, in a school of valuation, right, yeah. I would say that for for a unit comparison in Singapore, mm -hmm. land homes have always been compared to on a um, land basis. Land basis. Yeah. In the transaction, mm -hmm. when you look at the caveats, right, mm -hmm. it's always on a land basis. So to actually 
double check whether that's a high price, then usually what people do is they will <laughs> Google map and then, you know, try and find a house and say, okay, la, this house, okay, la, I sort of get that why it's at a certain level. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe the, you know, you can see la, the form mm. and shape of it. So whether it's a fair uh, way to value it, I think that there will be, uh, there will be uh, a factor that the valuers put towards the, the building. But I, 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 I agree with you on the valuation as in like it should be on the land. Yes. Uh, because then it gets really, it's difficult. I think it's this way is better. La. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think then the question is, mm. is it worth? Mm. So maybe we should talk a bit more about worth. Mm. So today, if I were to say that uh, someone says, hey, you buy a Rolex for mm. $10,000. Mm. Is it worth it? Correct. So some of the collectors, some of the watch aficionado, is it aficionado? Okay, those uh, watch connoisseur, lah, huh? mm. they would say that, of course, the backstory to it, mm -hmm. the, the, the value retention, so it's worth it. Mm -hmm. But recently I saw a news, uh, mm. so-called Tony Leong, you know, the Hong yeah, Kong yeah, actor, yeah. very mm -hmm. famous. Yeah. Mm. So he actually appeared in an Instagram photo with Karina Lau and was wearing this blue color G-Shock. Mm. which was a female model mm -hmm. that has yet to be launched. And suddenly everybody is crazy about it and mm -hmm. says, hey, this watch very nice. I want to own it. Mm. It's cost $150. Mm. It tells the time the same. In fact, more accurate. It tells mm. the same time. <laughs> yes. And because it's a modern culture, right? people <clears throat> like to chase. But in the FMCG <clears throat> market, where the fast moving consumer products, right? <clears throat> there's, it's the price differentiation, right? It's affordable to a lot of people. But when once you jump into the landed space, right, mm. that that differentiation could jump in numbers in the tune of six figures. Mm. So what is worth it today is also something that we want to discuss. Mm. So Jackie, mm. what would it, what would you place as whether it's worth if you were to be paying say 2000, 2002, 2004 for a landed property? What would you put as the reason why it pushes you to that, to across that line? Um, I think- What would weigh more? It's near to school, near future transformation. Plan. That's, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly. Yeah. Um, to me, it has always been uh, location. Okay. I will value location more than condition. But location very broad. Uh. Uh, I mean, obviously, I have my ways of measuring uh, which are the popular districts. Use ruler? Uh, <laughs> me <laughs> measuring tape, bro. <laughs> and nowadays, Keep people carrying bro. around that thing, you're it's still a boomer. <laughs> boomer, <laughs> boomer la. Bro, I think we always joke, la, you say he's a boomer. Yeah. So from the answers you get from <laughs> us, you will know which era measuring we belong tape. to. Measuring tape. Yeah. And Rama being the techie, you always have all the, you know, the, the laser, laser, the laser uh, measure. Uh, yeah. No, like, nowadays I don't even bring them, I don't invest in these yeah. things, bro, because you know why? why? All the other agents who come, they already have. So I tell them, can you just <laughs> bring that along? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. uh, Jackie, when you say location, right, location, of course, plays a different part, of course, to... Mm. Location itself has, like we mentioned about, let's say future transformation plan, mm. school. Mm. Like even within these elements, right? Which mm. one would you really push you across the line? Um, school. I would say school. For school. me. Anytime. Okay. Yep. School. Mm. So school move to la. To. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still a potential point of failure la, if the school moved to la. Yeah. I mean, although that is very slim, but then we did see a couple of yeah. <laughs> school have both. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Rama, le, what okay, about you? I'm happy that my answer is going to be different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think we also did an episode on this, right? Location yeah, yeah. against uh, condition. Yeah, yeah. condition. Yeah. 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 So, okay. First of all, in order for you to differentiate why this property is worth more, yeah. mm. you need to have enough information or you have must have seen a number of units lah. Yeah, I mean, if you don't, yeah, yeah, if you have never seen yeah. units, yeah. then what are you going to benchmark your decision? I mean, at against least what I'm going to say now Correct. is based on the condition of the house. So Correct. what Correct. are you going to benchmark them against, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. you don't know what other people have done, yeah. how other houses look like, yeah. what are the differences or additions or or enhancements you can make to the house or which yeah. is already made to the house that is of value. Yes. Mm. So apart from location, mm. okay, yeah. which is not part of my answer, mm. because for the PSF, for the land, I already include the location already. So now why must I pay more? Mm. Right? Yes. So that comes into the condition. That's your question, yeah? yeah. So that I have to now think of what's the next most expensive thing. 
mm. that I need to yes. invest on. Yes. So I can only think of construction la, mm. or okay. building mm. or the materials, mm. things Fair. that you use. Mm. Fair. You know, as compared to the school, the chances of it not being there mm. is very low. La. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Then location already fixed. So the next thing is, Okay, how much of room? How many rooms do I have? Mm. Yes. Can I increase the number of rooms? Yes. Uh, and all these things. So, area, yep. if these things are already available in the house, as compared to the houses that I've seen in the same location or same vicinity, and they don't have that, then it's okay to pay a little bit more for this. True, true, yeah. true. Very Because true. anyway, I'm going to invest this money, and that's how you value the. I mean, yeah. I would like. Yeah. yeah. So for that, I need to know. I need to view more houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to be in the market. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and these are things that we always repeat in all our uh, videos. Yeah. Okay. So these are these are the things that I would go for lah. So the condition of the house is very important. Yeah. Like I will ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Like, on, yeah. I hear you. Um, mm -hmm. I think what you are seeing is is what I would say worth. There are two types mm -hmm. of values lah. One mm -hmm. is like uh, a value that you can measure. Mm -hmm. So if today you see a house, then you say, okay lah, I go and call, check for indicative valuation. Mm -hmm. You have a, a list of indicative valuations, right? Then the valuer is just sitting behind the desk, mm. clicking, look at all the transaction, then go so go Google map, maybe see a bit, mm -hmm. ask like the, what is the condition of the house? How many rooms, blah, blah, blah. Mm. Any That's, last renovation? Yeah, mm. actual uh, value that can be measured. Mm. The other thing, it's a perceived value. The yep. perceived value is something that everyone has different view to it. Mm. So the perceived value is a position that you want to put yourself in to say that, okay, if I were to buy at this price, right, why do I perceive that I should pay at this price? Mm. Obviously, the matching of the perceived value between the seller and the buyers uh, may not always meet. Mm. Mm. That's where uh, a realtor comes into play. Sometimes we have to uh, uh, balance this mm. and make two sides of the people see the value. Because one probably already had, uh, went into the position mm. with uh, a measured value and a perceived value. Mm. And the one coming in only has a measured value. And mm. his perceived value, of course, uh, he will keep his cards close to his chest, right? Mm. Because yep. he he knows, but he doesn't really want mm -hmm. to put that. But why do I say this thing of a perceived value? Because valuers are backward looking. They look at transactions. The past transactions. Yes. Yep. yes. Yep. Then they will match a value or they will bring the value to a higher level because mm -hmm. it is not in their prerogative nor is it in the bank's uh, model, right? Mm -hmm. To push values uh, to a point that it's always, oh, uh, mm -hmm. oh, they got transformation plan. Mm -hmm. Let's give it 20% upside. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, think, I don't think you can actualize that mm -hmm. value the actual measure value today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the buyer who comes in and pays this price, right? Mm -hmm. He or she needs to come to that conviction that there is that premium that they're paying and this premium that they're paying today could mm. be easily uh, uh, overcome mm. in the next three months, six months, nine months, three years, whatever. But mm. this value is not going to be the highest mark for a much longer time. I have a case study, bro. Yeah. So I'm going, I'm going to also sell something at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think it's perfect example because I totally agree with you. Yeah. Mm. And it will only be better if we actually share this case study so yes. they will understand this very well. Yes. Uh. So this is the story. Mm. Okay. We are marketing a house at 2,200 per square foot. Mm. Okay. In the east, mm. in a very nice district. It's a popular yes. district. Yes. 16. Okay. Yes. Mm. Or oh, 14, sorry. 14. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So the interesting thing was after some time, I was thinking about it, right? Every buyer came there. They felt that the PSF of 2,200 is high, mm. okay? But what they didn't realize is, I was asking them, what are you comparing this against? What have you, what, have, what else have you seen? Yeah. Mm. Okay, they said, oh, we did go and see some condos as well. You no know, four bedders, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, everything, yeah, yeah. right? Mm. So I asked them, which condo you saw? Mm. So they named me two, la, mm. okay, which is a new launch. La. Okay, mm. one is a freehold, one is a 99. Mm. It's con it's a continuum, continuum, continuum and, and Grand, Grand Dunman. Dunman. Mm. Okay. So, I think Continuum is the freehold, right? Yes. Yeah, mm. Continuum is the freehold. The PSF is 2007 to 2009. Mm. Correct. Okay, for correct. a bigger size unit. Yeah, mm. correct. And whereas the other one is 2004 to 2005. These mm. are transacted numbers, are not mm. selling price. Yeah, already yeah. transacted already. Mm. Yeah. So, their sizes are about 1004, 1005 max. Yeah. Nothing more than that. Yeah. And of course, these buyers who are looking at this house, the land itself is about 2,000 plus. Mm. The built up is 4,000 plus. Mm. And they're asking 
only 2,200 mm. and this is a freehold. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So now, like what you said, right? Mm. The future price yes. and what this price actually is. Yes. That's when my friend Jackie, mm -hmm. this is brilliant. I didn't plan to say this, but you sent me an advertisement, remember, mm. of a brand new build mm. in the same street. Yep. That was 3,000 PSF. Mm. And this one is a ready moving house at 2,200 PSF. Yes. And they feel it's expensive. Yes. I. This is the... <laughs> I think everybody doesn't want to be the biggest fool on the street. Yeah. Mm. I think in, in, in all like in shit talking style. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. I, I forgot my last line. Yeah, yeah. Which was what you said. Yeah. So for the seller, right? Mm. To them, when they have this knowledge, yes. it's the perceived value yeah. that they feel. Hey, yeah. my value is this, you know, yeah. this is what I think it really right. is. How to fight that, man? I mean, I, I, I agree with them. Yeah. Yeah. So... When someone buys something, they always have to um, have some form of clarity or certainty in terms of whether what a value of a property is worth. And mm -hmm. in, in, that's, that's fair. Um, in the landed space, as opposed to the condo space, I think sometimes certain areas don't get much transactions uh, through time. Or even in recent times, mm -hmm. you have a really big... Uh, um, landed uh, areas where there are more transactions that take place. You have mm -hmm. pocket uh, landed estates where not many transactions take mm -hmm. place. Um, when that happens, right, I think what Rama says is spot on. Uh, when you have to see uh, and compare against different things to mm -hmm. have a value. So, um, but the market is not perfect. Mm. It doesn't mean that this person selling this house has absolute knowledge what another person is selling this house for as well. Mm. In our journey so far, which is close to a year in this uh, on this channel, we have met multiple sellers and buyers. And all of them are very different. Yep. And we have met sellers who have had very, very uh, lopsided expectations as to what they think their value is worth and what the market was ready to Mm. receive mm. and it was to a point where we feel that even with our advice and even with marketing efforts that the perceived value that they think their property is worth right is so far off reality right huge gap mm. that we know for a fact right that it's not going to happen in even future, in yeah. this cycle yeah Right. It yep. needed a lot of things to fall in place before even this property can be worth this much. Mm -hmm. And typically, these uh, owners right, uh, happen to own properties that are not that fantastic from uh, characteristics level from the state of the house. The condition of the house. Yes. And also uh, that quantum is something that not many, there are many things out there <coughs> that are in, let's say, they are trying to sell a, a terrace, an old terrace house versus a relatively middly, I would say decent done up, mm -hmm. semi D, and their quantum is quite the same. Mm -hmm. So case in point, there was an inter terrace that was uh, uh, quite long mm -hmm. and the owner wanted a, a fake price and we actually had advised her that, you know, this is not something up the alley of a lot of people. Mm. They needed a lot of things to do. So after paying for the actual value and what is worth and a premium that she's expecting plus a some more premium, right? They then have to fork out another huge sum to tear down uh, because this house is, I would say, original condition. quite original. Yeah. You, say, you say long as in the, the shape of the land. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So it's a really, really uh, long plot. Mm. And we wish the seller uh, the best mm. uh, because I would say that if we were to be in the position just to market that house, right, which is what some of our other realtors do, they typically, uh, obviously, we will always sell properties with a lot of all these like future transformation, like mm, amenities, mm, popularity, mm. Uh, yada, yada, yada. But mm. even with all that together, right, mm -hmm. is that perceived price high? Mm. That's why today's episode is, is it worth? Mm. And in that particular case, it's not worth. Mm. Yep. And if we were to represent a buyer to go in to buy this house, I'm sure there are people with that wallet size to do that. Mm. But what they may not understand is that the price that they are paying for and the hope value they are trying to 
sell it at in future, right? Mm. Would have a lot of competition that has a better product, better characteristics, better everything that they are yep. going to be uphill, better against. Yeah. Yep. So when we say worth, so just now earlier we had shared, we wanted to share uh, with you guys mm. uh, some stats. So um, we did uh, um, check the data from the start of the year to date, right? There were a total of 133 transactions, right? Mm -hmm. That were above $2,200 a foot. Yep. And 19 of them, right, happened to be in District 28 for a brand new leasehold property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 23 of them, right, happened in District 15. And 20 of them happened in District 10. 18 of them happened in District 19 and 11 of them happened in District 20, which works out to our thesis. Mm. What is considered first popular, mm. which is your prime District 10, mm -hmm. which is your popular Districts 15, 19, 20. 20. Yep. Mm. It also works in terms of our argument towards the condition of the house, which is in District 28. There were 19 transactions for a brand new uh, under construction property, yep. mm. albeit it's a leasehold. Mm. But it does prove that there are people who are willing to pay such prices. When it's new. Uh, yes. Bling, bling. Yeah. There are <laughs> 133 transactions. I would say somewhere, somehow so far, I would say probably the year, without all the numbers being out, I think we have crossed maybe about 500 transactions. Yep. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would be around 25% of the properties in landed that have transacted above mm -hmm. $2,200 per square foot. Yes. Yep. Yep. Which means that says 75% of the people that have not received nor found a house nor willing to put a perceived value mm -hmm. with in, in the combination of all the above factors, right? That's willing to push them across the line yep. for a $2,200 yep. per square foot. Yep. Mm. So using $2,200 per square foot then as a median blended between the prime condition of the house and popularity of the district, right? I would say at this moment, $2,200 seems to be a quarter of the people are willing to pay. But that is not a small number. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. It's not small. One in every four person, right, paid a landed house that they felt with all these factors put in, right, that they're willing to pay this price. Yep. So if today you're out there in the market scouting, right, and you're one of the three out of the four, right, which means one of them is willing to pay a premium, right, above what you think you're willing to pay, right, one of their listing is gone. Yep. And you don't participate in that. But it's fine. Mm. Because your perceived value of their property is not that high. Mm. The valuation, of course, somebody must have matched it or they paid cash. Whatever the case is, we don't have data for that. Mm. Yeah. But so for or is the- there something that they know that you don't know or we Perhaps, know? yeah. <laughs> perhaps. But Singapore being such a, it's just an <laughs> island city, right? There's pretty much, it's pretty much uh, that one, District 1 to District 28. Yep. Yeah. No matter how you cut it left, right, you call it OCR, RCR, CCR, whatever R you call it, right? That's just the whole R is Singapore. Um, when you walk into the when you walk into the landed space, right, the only few factors that remain is there's uh, not that many listings mm. available for sale. Once someone transacts, that stock is out of the market for logically three years. Yep. True. SSD period. Logically three years. Yep. Thirdly, once the property is transacted, if that guy wants it to be his his or her forever home, then it mm. would be forever, I mean, in their, in their reality, la, not in the market. Mm. So if as a seller today, you are gunning for that one out of the four person, right? You might need to be A, in the popular district, B, your condition of your house must be relatively not bad. Of course, tenure plays a part, but you still need to find that one out of the four person to buy this house. Mm. And we have seen certain houses that are well worth the premium. Hmm. Oh, absolutely. The hard work they put in, the renovation they did, the time they spent, they had an eye on the right perceived value at the right time yep. Yep. and they made absolutely. the right call. Yep. Yep. There were many out there who have seen the house, yep. but they were the ones who bought it. Yep. So you have to give them credit for that, uh, that eye for it. Mm -hmm. Whether they were represented or not, I would safely say that if there's something that you would rather want to have certainty to, perhaps it's better to have someone with data and have a trained eye and experience to bring you across the line. Mm. Yep. 
because it is a lot of money. Somehow you buy a condo, right? If mm. it's like $2,500 per square foot and it's a thou- let's say 1,500 square feet, it's mm. like a four, 4 million f- transaction. Yep. Not that many are at that level, la, in mm. all honesty. Mm. But 2,500 on a 900 square feet, 1,000 square feet apartment is 2.5 million. I think mm. many well within. La, huh? mm. With HDB prices continue to um, inch up. Yeah, yep. inch up, you know, mm. to the point that, you know, some people are f- not feeling that it should, it's, we are in the right direction. Mm. In this window, uh, are we seeing people accepting new prices for even public housing? Especially when, um, you know, I saw this, remember one of the data we pointed out yes. to the viewers was this 19 transaction leasehold. Yeah. Mm. Okay, in District 28, right? Yes. Mm. Uh, I saw advertisements yeah. mm. of our ex Prime Minister yeah. mm. in 2018 mm. in one of his speech mm. saying that Singapore is land scarce mm-hmm. yes. and you better get a piece of the land if mm. you really want. Something like that. It was mm. some speech. They just <laughs> took it out of context mm. and started as an advertisement <laughs> for all this. You know why I say this? When you put him out there, it's the perceived value. Yeah. <laughs> you add on to yeah. that property when yeah. you're marketing it. I, you know? Endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> I think as a disclaimer, um, it is factual that land is scarce in Singapore. Mm. But there is a difference between a piece of land located in one spot versus located in another. Mm-hmm. And therefore, you have your good class bungalows which are protected. Uh, good class bungalow areas which mm-hmm. have their characteristics in terms of density, prestige. And of course, the wallet size is very different. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But when we are talking about moving into the terrace zone or the semi-D zone and we leave the bungalows aside, again, the bungalows are, are a different uh, species for different people. Different play. Um, there needs to be a balance. So at the table today, I think what we can summarize are the following points. What is considered popularity would be A, mm-hmm. schools, mm-hmm. B, future transformation plans and three, public transport. Yes. Uh, accessibility yes. this three mm. and what would be considered worth would be let's say what is considered high is mm. maybe for a single story in a popular district very original asking for two thousand dollars a foot mm. then semi-d is maybe two thousand uh, maybe uh, 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 two thousand two for it to be a two story mm. in this popular district or two thousand four if mm. it's uh, done up mm. and yep. uh, rebuilt in the last maybe ten years but lacking some of the popular features that people mm. are looking for today. Mm. But please don't, uh, as sellers, feel that what we are saying is against you. We are not. Mm. Uh, what we are just trying to let you know that from your perspective, if you are truly want to climb up the ladder, right, this is what the current data is showing us. And we are not in a, I would say we are not like a super boom down Charlie in terms of landed, in terms of volume transactions. Mm-hmm. I think we will be in a relatively uh, normal year or in fact maybe shade of a normal year mm-hmm. so what are the some of the transactions that are happening are pretty reflective of what the true buyers are out there mm. yeah so uh, in summary uh, Rama uh, for what is worth right um, no pun intended right mm. um, if you had a budget of five million dollars mm. uh, if you were to categorize the above factors mm. wh- how would you rank it top three no matter how many times I say that, you know, a conditional house is good, mm. <laughs> at the end of the day, location is still more important. Mm. Okay. And uh, more times or so, it's also the convenience factor. Yeah. So accessibility to train stations is yeah. also important because you just don't look at it from your point of view. You look at it from the family's point of view. Yeah. Right. So, yep. To me, location and um, public, public transport, transport is and very important. Condition. Yes. Jackie? School is at number one, really. Yeah. Then? Accessibility to amenities. Uh, or oh, public transport. transport. Okay. And then the last one would be like condition. Because for me, it's like, um, I know the style that I'm looking for, for whatever that they already have built. Uh, yeah. I mm. might not accept it. I want yeah. to do, do. Mm. redo to my taste. Mm. Yeah. So for myself, I would think um, I'm not, I know for a fact I'm buying a house for myself, but I know that the game end game is always to sell it to someone else who wants to buy it. Mm. Mm. I mean, I don't need such a big house. So um, I would definitely put a uh, location mm-hmm. which is near good schools because mm. that has truly been one of the top uh, factors that people put in when they are looking for a landed home. Mm. 
Two, I think it would be the condition of the house because given that what Rama pointed out spot on was that construction cost today is expensive yep. and all, tran- all construction costs, right? Just because you hire a builder to do it, it doesn't mean he ain't going to translate the cost to you. He's still going to download the cost to you. Mm. He's not going to take less profit. No. It's very unlikely. So mm. if you listen to the guy say, hey, well, I don't have money, I never earn money, so I do. Uh, I tell you that's... <laughs> Run. <laughs> I hear that guy say that, he's out. Because for sure, he's a liar. Mm. Run. <laughs> <laughs> right. We all must make money, right? Makes sense. So therefore, uh, construction cost is very important. Yeah. And um, recently, last year, I think, uh, or even this year, there are the most number of strikes happening in the US. Strikes. Mm. People asking for a minimum wage. Mm. And when people ask for minimum wage, right, you have all these uh, companies coming out to say that, okay, we can give this minimum wage, but they're going to up the price for the product. Mm. Same in the land of uh, landed construction goes up, download the consumer. Once that price point is formed, it forms a transaction. Valuers would then be able to move the indicative valuations higher. Mm. So, Unfortunately, the whole overarching umbrella is that prices will take a slow and steady climb. And my third factor definitely will still uh, end up with uh, always, it has to be the, um, it has to be uh, the requirement of the buyer in how long they want to stay in the house for. Mm. Because even if I were to, want to do works to it, right? I will keep weighing how much work I want to do to it depending on how long I want oh, to do Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true, Bro, true, I, true. Can, I can feel you. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel you. Yes. Because, no, because it's... Because every day, right, we speak to people, right, they are always in a dilemma. Yeah. And they, the, 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 the list is so long, right? And in the most recent conversation I had with one uh, viewer, right, I, I really uh, told her this. I said... You, you maybe you don't worry too much about competition if there's one house that's available and then if property roundtable is searching for me, would you then put give priority to someone else? I said, maybe you should be more um, focused on what are your requirements because the requirements that this client has are quite onerous. And the onerous part is not as bad. It's just that they are so clear what they want, which makes me... Uh, know that whatever is out there, right? There may not be a lot of things available mm. to suit her needs. Yep. Whilst another buyer could be as simple as, hey, property round table, I want to buy a landed house. Can me money can ready? Mm. I'm okay with uh, just <laughs> like sitting there, just land bank, mm. wait for time. Mm. So everyone has different requirements. So therefore, um, in this episode, uh, in summary, popularity, we have already summarized. In terms of worth is really how much, what is the actual value? What's your perceived value? And in terms of the per square foot, we've given you a range, but it's not an all. Mm. Yep. It's just something that we thought that in today's market, if you're out there searching and you don't really know, like buying a car, right? Hey, how come this car, 100,000, this car, 100,000? What's the difference? Well, then in car market, you got your debris, mm. your like scrap value and all that. That's another education itself. Mm. I, I probably can't sell a car. Yeah. But, but in real estate market, there isn't that kind of like paper. What's the paper value? Mm. Can you scrap the house or not? Can you say, hey, today I don't want a house. Can I just scrap the house? Can I get like, what's my for sale value? Mm. Like, chow chow. Valuator, mm. Valuers will give you for sale value, but you can't scrap it. You can't just click and scrap the house. So whatever you put in, therefore has to has a lot more conviction, mm. experience and data to back it up. Yeah. So again, I uh, hope this episode is um, uh, another episode to change your perspective towards the way you uh, are searching for a property in the market. And as the listings dwindle, as the competition increases in the number of buyers, right, we implore you to uh, really get someone to work uh, alongside with you in the journey to uh, achieve uh, your goal and uh, pretty much try to let you have all the required knowledge that you need to before you make the decision. Now, we are also not uh, fortune tellers, but at least we know enough of what people out there are looking for. We know what probably will appeal uh, yeah. to others if you were to trade it off in future in your continued journey to uh, grow in your uh, property uh, legacy. So thanks for watching another episode. And if you like what you watched so far, please uh, like, subscribe and share to your friends. 
And uh, thank you again for reaching out to us. And there's a WhatsApp form below. I mean, thanks for, I think somebody pointed out that the WhatsApp form is not working. So we actually had done, uh, some tweaks to it. So uh, if not, just find our individual contact numbers there and uh, reach out to us. And thank you and see you in our next episode.